Hello guys, it is now nighttime here and I just decided to do my video a little late so I'm depending on my little light here to brighten things up a bit um, so that I can do today's video and I'm super excited about it. But before we begin, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, then hit the bell icon so that you can get notifications of whenever I post a fun new video because I would love for you guys to watch and to get your feedback in the comment section when I'm done with each video. So with that being said, I hope you hit like, I hope you hit subscribe. Let's go ahead and dive into the video. So in today's video, I'm going to do um, four different videos all circled around Sex in the City and each character in the series and what I learned from each character. So if you haven't figured it out already, as best as I could, I tried to dress up like one of the characters and we're gonna talk about Miranda today. I love Miranda. She taught me so much about being independent and doing things for myself and not being afraid to be alone for a period of time in life and not being fully dependent on you know, marriage being the most important thing in life. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about some things that I learned from Miranda Hobbs. One of the biggest lessons that I learned from Miranda Hobbs is I grew up and I'm still living in the South. And in the South, depending on what town you grew up in, your life is centered around the day that you get married and when you have kids. That is the end all be all. That is the most successful thing you can do is get married and have kids. And I did go through a period of time when that was the most important thing for me. It didn't work out. It ended horribly. Um, but I've come to learn that it's actually not the most important thing. It is a very important event to commit to spending the rest of your life to someone else, to be a mom. I'm a mom. I have two teenagers. That's super important. But there's also other things in life that are equally just as important, like discovering what your purpose is and going on a mission to make that happen, to be the best person you can be, to get into therapy, to work through any issues that you had that could be putting up roadblocks as far as you continuing on in your journey in life. And I know for me, as far as being a mom, and I love my children with all my heart, I also love the fact that I have written and published two books. I love the fact that I like to vlog and that I'm acting and that I'm going after those things because the truth of the matter is, and what a lot of moms don't realize is that once your kids grow up, what's going to be left after that? When they become teenagers and start to get their own friends and want to do their own thing, then what's going to be left? What are you going to have to do? Um, and that's why, you know, some empty nesters, their marriages end after their kids leave because their whole life was circled around their children. And that should not be the case. Yes, your kids are very important, but you should also have something, some little thing that is just for you. And for me as a single woman, I think I'm one of the last of all of my friends to get to get married. I'm not married, I'm not even engaged, I'm not even dating anybody. And I'm totally comfortable in that. There are times when I'm just like, hmm, it would be nice to share this experience with someone. But then I'm just like, you know what, eh, I'm fine. Especially with this quarantine thing that's going on. I don't think I would have survived that with somebody else, you know, someone else you know, now we're looking at each other 24 seven. What are you doing? What are you doing? And our little nuances and all of our annoying things and little neuroses are now coming full circle and we have to work through that and deal with that for the next however long until this quarantine is over. I'm good. I'm happy where I'm at. And I don't think there's anything wrong for a woman to not want to be married or to not want to have children or to be married or and or have children and still go after the things that are important to her as a person all in and of herself. Another lesson that I learned from Miranda is not shrinking down or apologizing for your accomplishments. There was an episode in Sex of the City, spoiler alert, 
where she went on this dating thing and she lied and told the guy that she was just a flight attendant because she noticed that every guy that she sat in front of to get to know once she told them that she was a lawyer and all the things she had done, they kind of backed off and backed down and didn't want to have anything else to do with her. So she decided to tell a guy that she was a flight attendant in order to um, not come off so intimidating. And that whole situation wound up not working out. Um, and she wound up eventually down the line meeting somebody who wasn't threatened by her career at all. And I think a lot of women especially men do it too but women especially i'm just going to speak from my point of view and from what i've seen in my life with my friends and family we and i've, I've even gotten advice from women that i love and respect telling me to sort of water myself down let the man take the lead don't overshadow his accomplishments don't make him feel less than laugh at his jokes you know kind of shrink your personality to make him feel like the king and that is horrible advice i don't want to have to diminish the things that I've done to make you feel good about yourself because truth of the matter is if you're confident in who you are there's really not too much anyone can say you're not going to hear someone say that they're doing amazing things and feel intimidated by that you're not going to be scared by that you're not going to want to shrink that person down you're not going to feel less than just because this person is doing well you're not going to compare that and and i've experienced that um in my life with dating that some guys just can't handle a woman that is ambitious and it's really sad that in 2020 i mean we've just started 2020 i haven't even done any dating in 2020 but um 2019 i'll say i'll speak for that um there are still men who would rather a woman just be the trusty sidekick and not take any kind of lead role, not be a partner. There's a song, um, little known fact about me, I love country music. And there's a song by a country singer named um, Jody Messina. And it, the lyric is, I want a man to stand beside me, not in front of or behind me. So I don't want to intimidate you, but I, I also it, to make you feel like you have to shrink down and that you're not as good as me. But I also don't want you to, you know, to think that you have to shrink me down or put me in my place and that I'm just there to be your psychic. I want us to be able to work together and 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 use our gifts and talents for good. We can both be great. We can both be awesome. There doesn't have to be a competition. And I never want to date someone where I, I feel like I can't ever at any point discuss the great and amazing things that I'm doing in my life because I'm going to want them to discuss the great and amazing things that they're doing in their life and we can together support each other. Hey, I forgot to put my microphone on so I want to apologize for the sound of the start of this video so we can continue with some much better sound. Let's begin again. So another thing that I learned from Miranda is that even in a relationship, you can write your own rules. I know that once she married Steve, she decided not to take um, his last name. She decided not to wear a white dress. She didn't want to get married in a church. Um, before they got married, when they had their baby Stevie, they had an agreement set in place so that there was no confusion. Um, I love the fact that they made their own rules and they did work what worked best for them as far as their relationship is concerned. I know that there are some married couples who were like every Friday we have a date night and we do this and we do that and and then there are some married couples who are like you know we're happy just sitting on the couch watching Netflix every week and regardless of what you do you have to find what works best for you and there's really not a rule book every couple is different and I think that's great I think that once I do get into a relationship lord knows when the heck that's gonna happen <laughs> When I do get into a relationship, I want to be able to sit and have an honest conversation and tailor make that relationship to fit 
what's best for me and that other person and not feel like we have to be this cookie cutter image of what the perfect relationship is supposed to look like. Um, I think when you try to seek perfection, you're basically aiming to fail because perfection doesn't exist. So you're building your relationship on these things that aren't real. And I feel like that's why the divorce rate is so high because people don't see marriages a starting line. They see it as, oh, everything's going to be great now. And then when everything is not great, it's like, uh oh, this isn't what I expected. And I feel like more people should be honest and admit that it's going to be hard. There's going to be times when you don't like each other. There might even not be times when there might even be times when you don't even love each other and things are going to get complicated and frustrated and and real and raw and and gritty and, and there's going to be times when things are on the line and you're going to have to make a decision to choose each other at the end of all that so i love the fact that she chose what's best for her and her relationship and they went according to that another thing that i learned from miranda is how to be smart as a woman i think that so many times in situations I've seen in, in past relationships myself, we are so trusting. We just want to love. We just want to nurture. We just want to be that, you know, caring person. We're, we're following our hearts. But at the end of the day, you have a 50-50 shot of making it or not making it. You still need to be smart and, and you know, have money and have a fallback plan and and just not make yourself be susceptible to being in a really bad situation because I've heard of women whose husbands just after 20 years decided they didn't want to be married anymore a dean at a college that I went to her husband came to her after 20 years and just said you know what I can't do this anymore and didn't want to be married anymore and that was the end of that and regardless of whether or not she had red flags or not, she found herself in a situation where she had to go back to school and she had to basically rebuild her life because she had poured so much into this person. And that leads back to the very first point of women not losing themselves in a relationship. That's why I gave up dating for a, a long period of time because I knew that if I dated at that particular time because of just how caring I am, I would forget acting, I would forget writing, and all I would want to do is focus on being in a relationship with that person, and that is not good. <laughs> um, I just took time to kind of find my way and, and start to develop my craft and really get my foot in the door so that at this point, um, I'm, I'm on the ground, I've hit the ground running and I'm so far into it that I'd be crazy to stop at this point. And we see that so many times when women get in relationships, all of a sudden they like the guy's football team. They never cared about football before. They don't know anything, but they like all the things that he likes and they forget their girlfriends to hang out with the guy all the time. And, and they forget their goals. They forget their dreams. They forget their fashion, their passions, and they just become that person's girlfriend or that person's wife. And there's nothing wrong with being somebody's girlfriend or wife, but there is something wrong when you forget who you are because things happen. Um, I had a friend whose boyfriend died unexpectedly. And speaking of the woman whose husband left her after 20 years, life happens. And when life happens, what do you have left? If the guy leaves, when the kids grow up and leave, or if you, you don't have kids, what are you going to have left within you that's just yours to focus on. Um, and also being smart with your money. If you're married, you need to know what's going on with the money, the money that's coming in, the money that's going out. Um, I forgot, I was watching some crazy reality show where the woman, um, her and her husband went bankrupt and she had no idea what was going on with the money. She was just completely just out of the loop. And I think that's crazy. And that's one thing that Miranda taught me is to always be in the loop, always pay attention. And, you know, 
unless you're like a stay at home mom or something and you don't have your own income, always have your own income. And, and, and we want to live in the world, a world where everything's perfect and everything's lovey dovey, but two people who love each other can turn quickly into two people who hate each other and people who hate each other can be ruthless <laughs> and hateful and unforgiving. So at the end of the day, you gotta be smart. Another thing that Miranda taught me is that it is okay to be me, just to be who I am. I don't have to look a certain way. I don't have to act a certain way. If somebody's gonna like me, they're gonna like me for who I am and I ain't changing unless it's something that really does need to be changed. But I'm not going to conform myself to fit into anyone's idea of who they think that I should be. I'm a strong woman and I've come a long way. I've accomplished a lot. I've gone through a lot. I have very much earned the peace and the joy that I have now in the midst of all the, the chaos that's going on but I'm in no way going to shrink myself to be to fit into anyone's idea of what I should be and if that means that I have to wait longer to find someone then that's a price I'm willing to pay um, I'm as far as settling I just think that's the wrong decision for anyone to make nobody should settle i think that i wish that more people were willing to wait it out until they found someone of quality who they didn't have to shrink themselves down for and customize themselves to to and and just wait like it's okay there's no rush there's no deadline i would rather take my time and be happy than than to rush and to wake up one day and be like what the heck did i just do so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video i apologize again for the crazy sound issue um in tomorrow's video we're going to dive into what i learned from charlotte um and then we'll just keep going until we get up to carrie and i love this show i own all of the episodes um so i watch them randomly um i'm a huge fan let me guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments let me know if i missed anything i love you guys so much and i'll see you guys in the next video bye